ladies, ladies and gents. We're going to do a little bit of talking while I do a little bit of driving going up this hill. And, uh-oh, can't have that while I'm driving up the hill. That'll be a distraction. So, can y'all get sign up on the door? Saying, don't disturb this groove. Cancel. Now, let's get back to the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to have a conversation while I take this 35 to 40 minute trip. And I just wanted to go ahead and explain something to all of you that all of you have seen. Then we're going to talk about some discharge information. I want you all to go back and take a look at all of the detective shows you've seen on TV. All of the spy shows where you've seen people spying. All of the shows where you see individuals, private citizens doing investigations on other citizens or other people. And I want you to pay attention to all of the videos, all of the movies, all of the TV shows that talk about a police state. What's been happening and it's increased since 9-11 is this spying on your neighbor. I was watching a video, you guys may have seen it, it happened just recently, I think it was either April or May of this year, where a group of individuals were renting, um, you know how people rent their homes, their guest homes to individuals and they'll rent it to them and the people will rent it for vacation instead of staying in a hotel. Well, these individuals had rented a lady's home and the neighbor, quote unquote, didn't recognize them primarily because of the color of their skin, but we're going to not talk about the color of their skin. And she called the police, saying that these individuals were breaking into the house and stealing things. The police get there and they literally cause these people a hassle. First of all, if the owner of the property has not reported a theft, a burglary, and has not said someone is trespassing on their property, the police don't have jurisdiction. Even if the neighbor says so, the neighbor would have to have power of attorney over the property. But shh, don't tell nobody. All of these people being arrested for breaking and entering, the only one who can charge them for breaking and entering is, pay attention, the homeowner. If the homeowner was not present at the time of the arrest, then the police have no probable cause. Now, I'm not doing this to tell people to go out there and start breaking into people's homes when they know they're not there. No, I'm actually saying people simply don't understand the law. And when people get arrested for things like this, they themselves don't understand the law. If you have a no trespassing sign in front of your house and that sign does not have the code, the police can't arrest the person for trespass. They can only tell the person to leave the property. If there is property damage, there has to be proof that the individual caused the damage. Not just that they broke into the home. There has to be proof. There's this thing called probable cause. Probable cause is not what people think it is. It's not probable cause if I say I saw something and it is a guess. For instance, a police officer cannot testify in his own capacity. He has to testify in his private capacity. He cannot testify as a police officer. He doesn't have the authority to do so. He can't write his affidavit as a police officer. And nobody calls him on that. When they show up in court with their uniform on, the question people should be asking is, what are the functions, what are the duties of your office? How long have you been working there? What is your age? Um, have you had any disciplinary reports? Have you had any complaints brought against you by anyone? And once we take care of that little simple distraction conversation, because that's all that conversation is for, is to distract. So once we get rid of that conversation, then we ask him under what capacity did he pull you over? Was it his law enforcement capacity or his 
peace officer capacity? Okay, or under what capacity was the arrest made? Was it his law enforcement capacity or policing capacity? Understand, the police are there to protect the public. Law enforcement is there to protect the economy. So they're there for businesses. That's their main duty. But anyway, get back to the conversation about how they've been training us to spy on each other and to spy on our neighbors. How they've been training us to mind somebody else's business. And now I picked up on it back in the 90s when I told everybody I made these cards called the MYOB Society. And I created an organization, the Mind Your Own Business Society. And I'm the president and CEO of that company. And I told people I was aggressively looking for new members. Uh, we live in a society where all of you do the same thing. You see something, say something. You've heard that? Well, you see something that you are not familiar with. You look even longer because it's out of place. So you want to, you need to make it fit. You need to make it be placed into place, place into understanding, place into familiarity. And when it doesn't, then you go and you tell someone else. You tell a friend, you tell a neighbor, you tell someone else. Again, you see something, say something. This is not something you grew up doing. Well, when you were kids, uh, you tattled on your brothers and sisters. You snitched, in other words. Now, is there anything wrong with snitching? Not in the least. That's a jail thing, that's a criminal thing. See, criminals have this thing about how they hate snitches because snitches get them in trouble. But here's the problem with spying on your neighbors. They're spying on you. And eventually when the time comes, somebody out of a vendetta is going to say something about you that is completely untrue, that is completely speculative. And you're going to be stuck with that. Why? Because it's a consequence. So my thing is, I don't have time to be worried about my neighbor's business. You see, I understand terrorism. Understand the bombings. Now that wasn't a 20th century thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. I'm driving, but I got my MP3 player plugged in. And I got some Dennis Edwards going on in the background. I told y'all this is how I roll. So, what's happening, sorry, Ed, when I drive... Um, I trained to be a truck driver and my instructor taught us to do something. We drove tankers and the one rule about a tanker, especially if the, uh, if your actual tanker is filled, you cannot slam on your brakes and a tractor trailer. Well, what's happening is that Whenever we, while during training, we would get to a light, we would have to snap our fingers. If we snapped our fingers, that means we made a decision. What decision are you talking about? We made a decision as to whether or not we're gonna go through that yellow light or we're going to stop before the yellow light. Well, the situation is, I was just passing a truck now, it's been 20 years, but I was just passing a truck and another car was in front of me and I found myself snapping my fingers because I realized I'm passing him. And when you're passing vehicles like big rigs, you have to understand the level of caution that's necessary, that's needed. And so what I had to do is I had to make a determination as to whether or not I was going to pass this truck who was overloaded, wide load, and so I snapped my fingers subconsciously, not realizing that that was from that training. So that's why I interrupted myself because it kind of brought a smile to my face that I had done such a thing. Um, let's get back to the conversation.
what's been happening so often in our lives and our society is we don't see the plan. This has all been a plan. They have planned this every step of the way. They, sorry, I got a, another truck beside me and he's trying to outdo me as I'm trying to go down this road. The road says that there's a certain speed limit and he is trying to speed up to keep me from passing him although he was going slower than I was prior to that and that's irritating irritating and stupid uh -oh. sorry about that ladies and gentlemen that's sorry about that that's one of my uh, team members at SATCOM I'll have to call them back and yes that's the generic ringtone and I have that set up on purpose. <clears throat> Everybody is going to have to start recognizing what's going on and see things for what they are. And a lot of people can't see things for what they are because they're blind by their own um, intelligence. Everybody thinks they know. Everybody thinks they're educated. Everybody thinks they have knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, just because you know a little bit doesn't amount to knowing everything. So the suggestion is many people have got to stop insisting on their rights. The society is not set up for you insisting on your rights. They won't let you. Okay? Society will not let you insist on your rights. And I'm sorry, but many of you have had the experience where the more you insist, the worst things got. All right, now let's get to this debt thing because that's the problem. Most people are not understanding debt. They're not understanding commerce. They're not understanding what's going on. Please get it. Go back and look at the videos done that speak about the United States Treasury, the Credit River decision. All of these things are important. Why are they important? Because society has said one thing, that the only thing the banks can lend is their own credit. The banks can't lend any money. They don't have it. Do they have lawful money? Yes, lawful money is credit. If you don't believe me, go back and look at the Credit River decision and the cases that are associated with that Credit River decision. You will see that that's all they're talking about. They said that they create money through bookkeeping entries on their so-called systems, their computer systems, their actual books. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not money. In the legal sense, or excuse me, in the lawful sense, that's money in the legal sense. What do we mean by money in the legal sense? Well, legal and lawful, those are two different things. And most people don't grasp the difference between legal and lawful. Legal, statutory. Lawful, constitutional. Sorry, I got to turn my Leela James down. She's telling y'all don't speak. And she's telling y'all don't tell her nothing because it hurts. All right. In a nutshell, this is our economy. You and the public are the economy. This is how things work. Okay, everything works off of you, your credit. They, you know, you had people in the past who spoke about your energy. This has nothing to do with batteries. Although Morpheus explaining it in the Matrix, that was all right. Your energy is your future production. See, what they have done is they've equated a price to what your value is, what your worth is. When it comes to credit, and you get to determine how much you're worth, you get to determine what your credit is. No one else can determine how much you're worth, what your value is. You have to evaluate yourself. You know what? Just as I'm saying that, Leela says, let's stop pretending who we are. 
okay? You have to realize who you are. And if you don't realize who you are, then you'll never have the value you deserve. So let me explain this discharge thing. Ladies and gentlemen, all of your debt is a government obligation. You need to start documenting your debt as a public debt and you do need to start discharging your public debt through the Bureau of Public Debt. There is a process for this. Why do you think it's called the Bureau of Public Debt? All of your debt is a government obligation. So what I have told people in my habeas corpus videos is that I do believe all of you should be writing a habeas corpus and bringing up the issue in your habeas corpus that these the system in and of itself is denying you your right to discharge your debt to pursue happiness to be at liberty and if you are successful sorry uh, there's a bus in front of me uh oh he's stopping Sorry, I had to look at the screen because I was getting ready to shut something down, but I'm going to pull over for a second. Sorry, I got to get rid of that because that was irritating me. I didn't want to see that, but in a moment, I'm going to get back in traffic. All right. Once everybody understands how debt works that it's not debt it was never debt the United States and the public are in bankruptcy so when you file a bankruptcy you go into court saying I am bankrupt and the March 9 1933 act highlights the fact that I am not the only one who's bankrupt and that I have a right to file bankruptcy and to have all of my debt discharged perpetually and futuristically. In other words, now until the debt is no, I mean the, what is that thing? The emergency has been declared over. They have not declared the emergency over, which is why we have the so-called bankruptcy court, the administrative right to file bankruptcy. That's all that's going on. But most people are not getting it and it's right there in front of you the whole time. So this is what I told a young man. I'm going to tell it to you. I knew a young man. I, I can't think of his name right now. And that's, that, that's uh, I believe it was Latif, but I'm not sure. But what he was doing is he was going into bankruptcy court. And he was filing as a creditor into other cases, such as if Wells Fargo was in there, and this would be legitimate. You see, if you have, and pay attention, I've never announced this to all of you before that you can do this, but you can. If you have a lawsuit pending, then the person you have the lawsuit against, if they have any bankruptcy filings, the company you have a bankruptcy against, if they have any bankruptcy filings in another state, you can come into that bankruptcy as a creditor and have what's called an advisory, uh, that adversarial, excuse me, um, case associated with that case. Well, all of you who are going through foreclosure, you can do what's called an involuntary bankruptcy against the bank that's coming at you. Pay attention. Your mortgage is a government obligation. Just go and look at the notes for the March 9, 1933 Act and the Emergency uh, National Emergency Act. That's the name of both acts. Look at the congressional notes which says the government owns all property in the United States and how the money will represent a mortgage on all of the mortgages of all of the property of all of the people of the nation because it is backed by the credit of the nation. People, it is all credit. Sorry, just kidding. It is all credit. 
That is lawful money. Remember, the money is backed by the credit of the nation. So I want you to pay attention to this. If it's backed by the credit of the nation, where is your access to your credit so that you can utilize your credit to discharge your debt? I'm going to ask that question again. If the money is backed by the credit of the nation and represents a mortgage on all of the homes and all of the people of the United States, where is your access to discharging your debt by use of your credit? Okay, that means again, it is a government obligation. And if it is indeed a government obligation, then why are you standing as surety? Why are you guaranteeing that you will pay that government obligation? You enter into a contract, enter into that contract by putting without recourse, before your name, not after your name, before your name and signature. Again, they hate that, but you have every right to do that. We did a video, it'll be up today, but did a video yesterday showing you guys how we were doing our checks and money orders wrong. Without recourse should be on the pay to the order of line. So if it's going to Bank of America, it should be pay to the order of Bank of America without recourse. And then we sign on the signature line. Remember, the signature line is not the endorsement. The pay to the order of section is the endorsement. Go back and look at endorsement. Okay, but all you have to do is look at 7 CFR 1901.508. It lets you know exactly what an endorsement is. It says the holder of the endorsed note shall endorse it as follows. Pay to the order of the United States of America without recourse. So the suggestion is that's what you do. Exactly what it says you should do. Endorse the note, pay to the order of, whatever the name is, period, without recourse. Okay, Gotta. I'm going to suggest you put that period there, because remember, their name isn't Bank of America without recourse. Okay, or you can put a hyphen. You feel me? So again... You all need to understand that it's all credit. There was a video done, it's called Hyman, H-I-M-A-N, the credit monster. And he explains that everything is credit, that they are using your credit. That's what all the bonds are for. They're not using your money, you don't have money. But you just said credit is money. You better believe it, I didn't say that at all. The government said, Credit is money. Okay? The government said credit is money. So if credit is indeed money, then you need to start understanding money. That's what the government did. They created an economy based on your credit. Because the money is backed by the credit of the nation. Well, where did the nation get credit from? The sovereignty resides in the people. If they get their sovereignty from the people, they get their credit from the people. Now, I didn't say this again. Congress said that. They said it will represent a mortgage on all of the properties, all of the homes, all of the people of the nation. Congress said that. So as long as you recognize that this is law, because remember those records are a part of the federal registry and if it's part of the federal registry, guess what that means? It's law it's not prima facie evidence anymore many of you are going into court and you're arguing and you're trying to explain this and what you should be asking the court the next time they, well you're getting that off the internet, well tell me if I'm wrong if I'm wrong, please state so with facts, conclusions, and specificity.
Don't you dare sit up here and tell me that I'm getting something off the internet without qualifying your statement by saying what I just said was not correct. And if it's not correct, please specify what part wasn't correct and do so with specificity. Nobody's doing that. Okay? So that is my suggestion to all of you that you understand credit, you understand money, you understand financing, because a lot of people don't understand financing, and they should. All right, I believe that that will give you guys a better understanding of why we created the Our Style Money Orders. It was based on the understanding of credit, not on the understanding of money. I told you since a kid, I knew that dollar bills were not money. Again, as I keep pointing out to everybody, it says the note is legal tender only for paying debts. Well, how could it be money if you can only use it for paying a debt? Yeah, I know. I know, makes sense, doesn't it? So why are you people willing to go out there and break your neck for something that is not bread, water, milk, wine, huh? Why are you sacrificing so much for what amounts to nothing? Go after your credit. And if you're able to articulate what I just said, that's your right to file habeas corpus because they have hidden the avenue for accessing your credit so that you could pursue happiness. So that you could be at liberty. So that you can be free from involuntary servitude. Alright, eventually, it's not my job, but eventually I'll put together um, the video showing you where the Supreme Court says, well, no, 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 you guys have it in the laws that you did not know exist. In the laws that you did not know exist, it's right there. Just type in habeas corpus and it will take you down to the habeas corpus section. I'm sorry. I apologize. I've already included this. In 2012, when I put that document up on the net, I included the habeas corpus section. Okay? Blocking your access to your securities is a denial of liberty, which gives you the right to file habeas corpus. So, my suggestion is, those of you who are legally wise, understand the reason why habeas corpus was put in place in the first place. It was slavery of any type. You could do habeas corpus. If you don't believe me, go back and do your research on the Northwest Ordinance and see how in 1812 the slaves were filing for rid of habeas corpus. Many of them were being denied for stupid reasons, but they were nonetheless still filing for writ of habeas corpus. So if those slaves could file for writ of habeas corpus, so can you. Okay? Let me say it again. If the slaves had the right to file for writ of habeas corpus, so can you. And you go in under the fact that you're being held in slavery against your will. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was just to give you a brief synopsis and understanding that everything has not ever been what it seems. Many people believe that credit is credit, money is money, and it is not. Again, go back and look at the notes of Congress. That will explain it a whole lot better for you. Where it specifically says the ownership of all property is in the state. And the money will be backed by the credit of the nation. Because it represents a mortgage on everything. Don't believe me? Go back and take a look. It says it represents a mortgage on everything. You all are going to have to go after your freedoms 
what are those freedoms that we're talking about? Well, those freedoms are basically, see, how do we put it? Your ability to be at liberty. Remember, you have the right to be at liberty. You must exercise this right. You have no other option. You must exercise your right to be at liberty. You don't have to insist upon it. They bring you before them. Excuse me. I'm a free man. I'm a free woman. And now I don't sit up here and play that presumption of law thing. I am a free person. I am a free woman. I am a free man. And as such, I haven't consented to contract with you. As a matter of fact, even if I did consent to contract with you, you haven't held up your end of the agreement. See, my contract entails that I am at liberty to be about my business without interference. And you are interfering with that. You're going to have to be able to explain to them, even if you were under contract, you never agreed to what they're doing. That you have not received the value of the contract. You have this right, people. So many of y'all need to act like Luther and not be a fool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to go ahead and end this because I am at my destination and I got to focus on traffic. So I'll speak to y'all next time. Goodbye.